play you a short video of President Vladimir Putin, and he was in a conference yesterday, and he made the statement that Russia would not launch a first strike against the United States or NATO, but they would respond with a second massive nuclear strike, and that uh, the Russians would be martyrs and go to heaven while the United States uh, will just die because they won't have time to repent. So let's play this, folks. A lot of people are claiming that President Putin is a is an atheist. He's not a Christian. I do believe he is a Christian, folks. I do believe he, he believes in Jesus Christ. He is only trying to protect his country and his national security. We are the aggressors here, and he is publicly stating yesterday that Russia will not launch a first nuclear strike on NATO or the United States, but they will respond with a second nuclear strike. So let's go ahead and watch this. This is uh, has subtitles, so you're going to have to read the subtitles. We le- will leave this video in the description box. So let's go ahead and uh, and watch this real quick. So this is the video that uh, President Vladimir Putin, <clears throat> they just put out, folks. So you, uh, Putin is saying that Russia will not launch a first nuclear strike. So if nuclear war happens, it will be the United States and NATO that starts it, not Russia. That is what Russia is stating publicly. This is President Putin. He has just made the statement. You can watch the video yourself that Russia will not launch a first nuclear strike, but they will respond and destroy the enemy. So all of you guys that want to uh, badmouth Putin and say he's going to destroy the world, it will be NATO and the United States who launch a first nuclear strike, and Russia says they will respond and destroy the enemy. Or actually this afternoon, it is uh, January the 26th, 2022. Uh, We do have a lot of new breaking news for you guys, and it doesn't look like it's too good. But we can always uh, hope for peace, folks, in the midst of uh, war preparations. A lot of things have been going on. So the uh, the biggest breaking news story is that the U.S. ambassador to Russia has delivered uh, the uh, written responses. Let's go ahead and get you called up on that first, and then we will give you the other news. Uh, If this is your first time here to our broadcast, please hit the notification bell and the subscribe button, and hopefully YouTube will notify you of our upcoming broadcast. So this is the moment of truth we've been waiting for, folks. This is, uh, we've been waiting on this for over a month. The United States has finally delivered to Russia the written responses for Russia's request to work out a peace treaty to negotiate this to de-escalate the situation. And unfortunately, early word has come in that the answer is no. 
Uh, so this is coming in from RT Television. Russia receives the U.S. response to security proposals. Envoy delivers American and NATO reactions to the Russian offer. that I was of course in America and all these people all their stuff packed and um, I told everybody they needed to move towards the north where it was safe um, but a lot of people wanted to go south and I said you can't you've got to go north well, as if we're going south I seen that America was under fire I'm talking about the whole United States, all the way around it. I've seen it plain as day, a big old map, and fire all the way around it. And I said, how are we supposed to get out in there? It said, it's supposed to entrap the people. So, I said, okay, I'm going to, no, we got to figure it out. So, they were all lined up in a line. And it was like they were marching. There was, there was no kids in my dream. And... I seen I was a leader and people were trusting me and I told them we have to go to Moscow we have or yeah not Moscow Turkey and Quebec and then um, I woke up I just thought it was crazy names um, I don't know if they coincided with each other or not, but I was driving down the road and there was a bunch of people that were stopped, like on a train track type deal. And there was no train that was going on it, but there was people stopped. And at the end of it, there was like federal agents or the FBI or whoever they were, but they were trying to make people stop at these checkpoints um, beyond that and it, they were causing like big cyclones in the sky well I guess it was all American war that broke out and I was trying to get to safety but at the same sense I was so excited I wanted to record what was going on because I thought it was a tornado well when in reality it wasn't a tornado it was war it was nuclear war an atomic bomb and they shot across the sky like this and then, um, afterwards, um, everybody, like my family, my kids, all them, they was in this building, and I had to try and make it back to them, but I, I was not able to be seen, otherwise I'd get in trouble and I'd be drafted into this war thing. I didn't want no part of it, so I had to turn around and try and seek safety, and it was almost as if I was on a broadcast, um, so... Yeah. Um, okay. And like I said, this dream was just, it was just crazy because I kept thinking it was a tornado that was touching the ground and it wasn't, it was cyclones literally because of the, the missiles and stuff. Um, and then it switched scenes to where I was at my brother and brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws, Jeffrey and Ashley's. And I was sitting there visiting with my nieces and stuff. And I noticed that they had small little piles of stuff on the counters. And I was talking to Jeffrey, and I was like, oh, so you guys are getting stocked up. And he said, I don't even know what you're talking about. So I'm sitting there talking about the financial collapse and food deprivation and things that's about to happen. And he was just like, oh, I don't know nothing about that. You'd have to talk to Ashley. Well, then I was trying to, I don't know what the heck I was trying to do, but I needed it as a black bag. And I asked if I could get my nieces one weekend so that we could do some art stuff. And Ashley's like, yeah, the Ziploc bags are um, in the basement, the smaller ones. So I was like, oh, okay. Well, then I walk over into their living room. And Alana, she's like almost seven. But in my dream, she was still that age, but small enough to be in like the uh, a little extra saucer. And she was facing a white wall. And there was a radio that was sitting right there. And somehow, some way, I gave Ashley all my Christian music, and she was listening to this Christian music. And I told her, I said, "Oh, so you got stocked up?" Uh, she goes, "Yes, because I know it's coming." And then I woke up. I felt so good.